welcome back! Today we'll be talking about a song from Shakespeare's play The Tempest called Come Unto These Yellow Sands. The Tempest is, of course, a fairy tale, and it's full of magic, and the music of Tempest often goes along with the magic, and that's definitely true of this song. It happens early in the play, just as we're being introduced to a character named Ferdinand. This particular song happens early in the play, actually in Act 1, Scene 2, and it is sung by a character named Ariel, who sings many of the songs in this play. He's a fairy, and he's been sent by his master, Prospero, to basically entrap Prospero's enemies, who have finally come into his hands. And so at the beginning of the play, he sends this great storm that washes his enemy's ship into shore, and it appears that all of them have been drowned, but really he's just scattered them across the island. The general plot of the play follows Prospero sort of drawing them all in, and sort of getting his revenge, but also giving them a chance to repent and change, and giving him a chance to put himself back in a position of power. This song happens at the moment that Ferdinand, the son of one of Prospero's enemies, is washed up on shore. Ferdinand is a prince, and he's going to be an important love interest to Prospero's daughter later on. And so this scene is really Ariel sort of leading Ferdinand into the island and preparing him for the kind of ordeal that Prospero is going to put him through as he prepares Ferdinand to marry his daughter. There's a lot more to it, of course, and you should definitely read or watch the play yourself, or at least listen to my summary of it in another video. For now, I want to focus on the song itself, what it is, what it's doing, and what it means. The song begins as Ferdinand enters the scene, and Ariel appears behind him invisible, playing music and singing. Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have, and kissed the wild waves whist. Foot it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden bear. Hark, hark, the watchdogs bark, bow wow, bow wow. Hark, hark, I hear the strains of strutting chanticleer. Cry, cock a diddle dow. There's also a spirit echo after each of those animal sounds, repeating the animal sound. This song may seem a little strange at first, especially with all of the, the animal noises, the barking dogs and the crowing rooster. It's also something of a surprising song for Ferdinand, who's just entered this island. There's singing in the background, and there's apparently instructions being given for a bunch of spirits to perform a dance, but he can't see any of this. He can only hear it. It's almost a funny song, but Ferdinand's not really in a mood for humor at this moment, and in fact, there's going to be a shift right after this song to recognize the fact that Ferdinand believes his father is dead and drowned. He's also lost and alone, and this adds to the whole magic and mystery of the island, where he's surrounded by spirit voices, but still feels very alone, having lost his father and the rest of his crew. Let's walk through the lyrics and talk about what they mean. Come unto these yellow sands seems an invitation, and at first it may seem to be to Ferdinand. And perhaps it is, in part. But it also appears to be to all the spirits who are going to gather around and dance. So there is a question here. Is this song an invitation to Ferdinand? Or is it just ignoring Ferdinand? And that question may be open to Ferdinand as well. He may not know whether this song is sung for him or not. But he knows that he's been washed up on yellow sands. And here is all this magic and music and apparently spirit dancing. But he's still not able to really be a part of it. It continues and says, Then take hands, curtsied when you have, and kissed. Those lines are dancing directions. So the fairy spirits are taking hands, they are curtsying, or bowing to each other, and then they are kissing, as in kissing the air on either side of your face, which is done often in a country dance. It adds to the sort of rustic country feel to this dance, and yet, where are the dancers? The next line says, The wild waves whist. Whist here means to calm down, to, to quiet. And this line is important because it recognizes Ariel was the one who called up this great storm that apparently sunk their ship. And now it's as though he's calming the storm back down and bringing everything back to peace. There's a kind of magic about the music throughout this play and in Shakespeare's other fairy play, Midsummer Night's Dream. 
And perhaps this is a calming of the storm kind of magic, where the fairies singing and dancing is sort of the process of calming. Foot it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden bear. So footing it, of course, is going through the dancing steps. And featly, we have the perhaps a pun on your feet versus the quick and light movements of their feet. Sprites, of course, are fairy spirits. They're the spirits who are dancing that Ferdinand doesn't see. And when it references burden, which it will do a few times, and also in the next song immediately after that, it's talking about the chorus or the refrain. So each time that Ariel sings one of the animal sounds, the spirit voices sing the burden or the repetition of that same animal sound. Hark, hark, the watchdogs bark. Hark, of course, is to listen, and we see this repeated not only here with the watchdogs, but then immediately afterwards with Chanticleer. There's another song in a play that was written fairly near to this one, the play Cymbeline. The song Hark, Hark the Lark. Again, it's about calling out and listening to the animals to sort of give you instruction here. And it's possible even that the actor who plays Ferdinand here plays Clotten, the character who had that song sung. It is a little funny and maybe comical that all of a sudden all the spirits are making dog barking sounds. This also emphasizes the fact that there's no nothing human here, right? This is a, a, an island which is enchanted, definitely, and full of spirits. But it doesn't feel like there's any people here yet. Of course, we're eventually going to meet Prospero and his daughter Miranda. But for now, Ferdinand believes he is very, very much alone. And these spirit voices don't really necessarily encourage human company. It's more of a a creature world, the spirits of nature and the spirits of the animals. Later on in the play, Ariel will be dressed as several different kinds of creatures. He will appear as a harpy, as well as a water nymph, and eventually a whole lot of the fairies will appear as hounds that will pursue one of the characters off the stage. So although the fairies, especially Ariel, do speak with the humans, they never seem very human. Shakespeare goes out of his way to continually emphasize how fairy-like Ariel is, drinking from the flowers like the bees. And Ferdinand, surrounded by all of these creature voices, probably feels even more alone than before. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting Chanticleer, cry cock a diddle -dow. Chanticleer was the name for a rooster, a common name to call a rooster, and so it's used synonymously with rooster frequently. But notice also there is a quality about these two animals that we evoke here. There are the watchdogs who seem to sense the approach of Ferdinand, and the rooster also who seems to announce his coming. So although they are maybe indifferent to Ferdinand and making him feel isolated, there is kind of a paradox here. He is both alone and yet in sort of rich spirit company. He is both ignored with this dancing, but also recognized in his arrival. And therefore he doesn't know what to feel. Is he being welcomed? Is he being ignored? Is he alone? Is he in company? All he knows is that he's definitely on an island, and the island is very, very enchanted. And so that's what this song conveys to him. And to us as a reader. This song is followed shortly thereafter by another song which is one of my favorites in the play called Full Fathom Five. And I'll talk about that one in a separate video. Thanks so much for watching. You can click to subscribe or to go to my Patreon page where I have a lot of great resources for you or to click to another video like the Full Fathom 5 video. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.